everyone, it's Tim Maria here, producer and host of Digital Health Live at CES 2014, sponsored by Ideal Life. We got Greg Matthews, he's the group director of interactive social media for WCG. How are you doing? I am doing great, thank you very much, Tim. So we've had a lot of fun panels today. You guys were doing the loudmouth patients, making noise and making change. And what's your background? First of all, we'll start with that. So the reason that I ended up on that panel is because uh, for the last five years, I've been studying how social media is being used in healthcare. And so uh, both with patients, physicians, healthcare companies, it's been really interesting to see how they've taken to that platform. Uh, and so the reason that I was a part of this panel is I've specifically been studying physicians and the way that physicians and patients are interacting together online. Uh, and so that's what I was uh, representing to the team here today. It's interesting because this space is kind of shackled by regulations in, in fear, I guess, because we can get fined. It's true. And it's, uh, it's one of those things that's really tough to do well. Um, because there are a lot of concerns, especially from the doctors. They feel constrained by HIPAA in many cases. Uh, and it was kind of interesting. My other panelists, uh, Donna Cryer and Hugo Campos, uh, noted that they had really great relationships with doctors online. In fact, many times better relationships there than they did with their actual treating physicians. Interesting. And it's actually, it's not that surprising because the truth is for a doctor to talk to their patients online, is very different than talking to patients online because it's very easy to slip into a medical advice and treating which would potentially be a problem so it's it's the doctors who are out there um, i think really trying to learn from the patient online experience um, that are really leading the charge there interesting so what's the gap what's missing so to me i think the biggest gap is that there are there aren't enough uh, folks that are really out there doing it. Um, my company is tracking about 15,000 US doctors on Twitter. Um, and that's a number that's growing really fast. And so I think it's really exciting uh, that more and more doctors are coming, but that's 15,000 out of you know the roughly 700,000 uh, practicing docs. And so there aren't really enough of them to go around. Interesting. Um, what else is going on in the panel that really, were, 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 there, were there sparks flying? <laughs> you know, um, I think any time that you get uh, Hugo and Donna uh, on the stage, there's a potential for that. Um, it was pretty agreeable today, but I think one of the things that's really interesting is that they have uh, they both had experiences where their physicians really weren't interested in having them participating in care. Yeah. Uh, and so I think the, uh, the thing that really stood out for me is that the doctors who are online engaging with patients, and they're literally, we did a little infographic, there are, you know, we looked at 100 e-patients who are connected and conversing with over 500 doctors online. And the reason that they're doing that is because they want to learn from the patients. They are spending their discretionary time uh, learning. And what the conclusion that we came to is that we want that kind of doctor. We want the kind of doctor yeah. that is passionately invested in giving their discretionary time and wanting to learn from their patients because the patients are you know, perhaps the most untapped uh, source of medical information on the planet. Yeah. So what are the salvos like? Doctors are using mobile devices, tablets, or are they sitting behind a desk? What's the environment? You know, it's uh, it's it's really varied. Uh, and I think as varied it is, as it is for anybody else because these guys, you know, most of them are practicing physicians. And so sometimes it's on a mobile device in a spare minute. Sometimes it's, you know, between doing charts at the office. Um, we did a little study uh, looking at how all these doctors are using their tools. And our assumption was that they were probably mostly online, you know, in the middle of the night uh, when they're on call, something like that. Uh, the truth of the matter is that more than half of their tweets are coming during regular business hours. Okay, so you're actually doing time tracking, semantic analysis. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're looking at who and what they follow, you know, who do doctors, uh, you know, what sources do they cite uh, online, uh, how do they connect with one another. It's, uh, it's interesting stuff. So... We were talking earlier about this, con uh, what were you speaking with, with like infographics and what's the visual communications medium going on here? So um, <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of good insights to be gleaned when you're analyzing online conversation. Um, there's so much of it though, that it can be a little overwhelming, uh, you know, to look at a stream of tweets that's, I mean, we're, we're doing analysis sometimes on 100, 150,000, you know, a million tweets, okay, right? you have to find some way to capture that in a way that's um, understandable. 
And so part of what we did for this conference was we produced some infographics. Oh, you got them here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, uh, we did a little study on how people were talking about the Affordable Care Act online, both patients and physicians, awesome. and we're able to do some infographics summarizing yeah. uh, that conversation. So now everybody wants to know where those are going to be posted up. So uh, I actually did a blog post this morning uh, okay. that included a social network visualization. It's a very cool Google tool. Um, but they are going to be posted at uh, blog.wcgworld.com. So that post is up, and then the infographics, uh, as soon as Jill lets me, I'll, uh, I'll post them. So what we'll do is we'll tweet this information out. We'll have the full session videos on the, on the uh, Digital Health Summit website. A couple days, because CS is big and people have to get all that content up. And then our videos will be posted at uh, YouTube slash Digital Health Summit. What about Twitter, things like that? How do people track you? So uh, you can find me on Twitter at Chai Moose, C-H-I-M-O-O-S-E. And yes, I'm from Chicago, and I'm a pretty big guy. So <laughs> Nice. Yeah. All right, Greg. Well, cool. Nice to meet you. Thanks for uh, giving us your insights. Thank you.